In my hand, I have the latest MacBook Pro, and I'm going to talk about my experience as a photographer and filmmaker that relies on these laptops to edit projects. Now, the question that I had looking at all the review videos and stuff about the MacBook Pro was, what is the real life benefits? I see a lot of benchmarks and tests, but what is it actually like to use as someone who uses programs like Photoshop and Premiere? I also wanted to answer the question of which MacBook Pro do you need to get because you have the M1 Pro chip and you have the M1 Max chip and all kind of specs in between. So based on those questions, I think the smartest thing for me to do was to get the cheapest MacBook Pro they offer, which is the 1999 model, bare minimum, just basic M1 Pro chip. Nothing added on, just $19.99. Now, yes, that is still expensive, but hear me out. You do not need a higher spec to get great performance. This thing is mind blowing. It honestly has blown my mind. So the computer behind me is the desktop that I typically edit on and it has a 10th generation i9, 64 gigabytes of RAM, it has a 3070 graphic card and two terabytes of NVMe storage. So it's pretty specced out. It should be able to handle everything fine. So I'm going to tell you right up front, I found a project that was uh, pretty intense to edit and it took my desktop 10 minutes and 52 seconds to export and the video was over 11 minutes long. So it exported faster than the video lasted. On this MacBook Pro, the 14 inch base model, it took 16 minutes and 49 seconds to export the exact same thing. So about a five minute difference, a little over five minutes. So that sounds like, oh, well. You know your desktop is still better so why would i why am i mind blown about this and that's why i said you cannot rely on just export times or benchmarks because let me show you what the real world practicality of that is in the project that i am using as an example i was reviewing the dji fpv drone and drone footage is pretty highly compressed for the most part just like gopro footage and other things like that it's very compressed and it's really hard for computers to edit most of the time so I have that going on at 4K60. On top of that, I have Sony A7S3 footage that is recording me flying the drone. So you have 4K60 drone footage, 4K60 Sony A7S3 footage, all color graded and everything in a project. Okay, so here we are on my desktop. Like I said, this is a 10th generation i9, 64 gigabytes of RAM, and a 3070 graphic card. So it's a pretty spec'd out computer and if I scroll through the footage of just my Sony A7S3, as you can see, it scrolls through pretty pretty well. It's not really struggling too much on this. And if I get to the part where it's the drone footage with the A7S3 footage on top, that's when this kind of gets a little bogged down because like I say, drone footage is usually kind of hard to edit because DJI's codecs are really not the best. But it scrubs through, you know, not too bad. So if I hit play, so play is hit and it's still not playing yet. It's still, or the audio is playing, but the video is, is not, it moved. So the playhead is moving and it's really having a tough time right now. It's really struggling, as you can see. So if I pause it, it still hasn't paused yet. Okay, it just paused. If I go back to the regular camera footage and I hit play, see it plays, no problem. So it can handle this fine. It's when you add the drone footage is when it's the issue. So let me turn off the camera footage on top and just play the drone footage. So if I just play the drone footage, 4K 60 frames a second, no issues. It plays it. It should be able to play it. But if I do too much, this is what happens. It freezes, as you can see. It's having a hard time. So this is full quality playback. If I drop it down to an eighth quality to try to save some processing power and hit play, I hit play and it's still struggling. So even if I reduce the quality, it's still having a hard time processing that drone footage and the camera footage on top of each other. And like I said, this is a 10th generation i9 with 64 gigs of RAM 
and a 30 to 70 graphic card. So as you can see, it didn't really play that back smoothly because it's 4K 60 footage from a drone, 4K 60 footage from a camera stacked on top of each other. Didn't do too great. I would have to render it out. That might take 10 minutes, then look at it. If I wanted to change something, I have to make those changes, render it out again to be able to look at it again. Or I would have to turn certain things off and just focus on whatever it is that I'm working on. So workflow wise, you can see where the export time is fine, but the editing is a pain. Like trying to get through the timeline and just scrub through footage alone is a problem. If I wanted to add anything else to this, if I wanted to put in some motion text or tracking graphics or something like that, it would just, it wouldn't work. So I would have to probably export the video and then open it up again. And you see what I'm saying? It's just taking too much time. Now watch what happens when I open the same project on this laptop. So now here we are on the MacBook with the exact same sequence, the exact same color grade and everything. And if we scrub through the timeline, we have no problems there, right? Scrubbing through all this footage very smoothly. No issues at all whatsoever. If I scroll over the drone footage, not even a hiccup, nothing. It's just all buttery smooth. So let's zoom in, like literally. Every little, every little detail, no problem at all. It's just stuck to my mouse movements. Like it is doing everything flawlessly. If I hit spacebar and hit play, it plays. No issue. Hit spacebar again, stops. Plays, stops, plays, stops, plays. It's, it's flawlessly. It's asking for more. It's like, is that all you have to give me? So what I did was, this is four different drone clips and four different A7S3 footage on the timeline, stacked on top of each other, playing at the same time, all together. And it's still scrubbing through it. Is it perfect? No, but it's still doing better than my desktop. Like, this would, this would completely kill my computer. Let's see, what the, let's see what the play test looks like. So if I hit play, it didn't immediately start playing. Now it's playing. And it's dropping frames, but it's still playing through. This is better than my desktop did with just the one clip. So as you can see, it clearly, clearly does way better than my desktop. This is a M1 Pro chip, base model, 512 gigabytes of storage, the lowest spec you can possibly get. So any of them that are higher than this will be even faster. So with the higher models, you might get the export times that are faster than my desktop. But for sure, the editing process on this is much better. I would rather edit on this any day of the week. Now, if I need this strictly export times, then yeah, my desktop probably beats it every time. But it's not too often I'm going to have those situations where I have 4K 60 footage on top of 4K 60 footage. And even when I put four of those on the timeline all together at once, this still performs better. It's not even close. It's, it's not even close. And this is the base model. So don't waste your money and feel like, oh, you don't need the base spec. It's only 16 gigabytes of RAM in this. Like, this is 16 gigabytes of RAM. That's 64, and it's not even close. It's not, like, because this, the way this chip is structured in this, in this laptop is not the same. So it's not apples to apples comparison. It's built completely different. So the way we look at the numbers is, does not apply when you're looking at these laptops. You kind of got to look at it like this. If you take a gorilla and hand it an Amazon package and tell the gorilla to open the package, what is it going to do? It's going to try to just rip the box open until it gets inside, right? But if you give it to a person, they know to just cut the tape and the box is open. It works smarter even though it's not as strong. So that's exactly what's happening. My computer is very strong back there, but it's not as smart as this laptop. So when you have footage that's coming out of something like this, it's like, okay, that's pretty tough footage, but I know how to get that open and, and you know, able to edit very smoothly. My computer back there is just trying to just rip it open. It's, it's trying as hard as it can. When I, when I start scrubbing through the timeline, the fan starts spinning, and it's just working overload to try to unpack that footage when this computer is just doing it so gracefully. And that's literally the biggest difference. So if you thought about spending more money because you were scared to buy the base model M1 Pro, don't. Buy, buy a high spec if you need it, or if you want it, or if you just got money to burn, but you don't need it. So save your money. So if you have any more questions about this laptop or what it's like, or you want me to try other things out, just let me know in the comments down below. 
Follow me on Instagram, and I will see you guys in the next video.